the cowardly act of barbarism perpetrated by government elements against citizens whose only interest was to choose a member of parliament for themselves could have been worse. And as he just said, it was just the intervention of God. If you looked at the number of bullets that were discharged on that day, to think that not a single person died, it is only God's intervention that prevented it. <laughs> Thankfully, the National Democratic Congress, as it had always done throughout our democratic journey since 1992, and on that day, once again showed leadership and put peace and security of the country first by deciding to withdraw from that by-election. Indeed, later events would prove that the Dastardly Act was an orchestrated plan that was intended to be replicated at other voting centers to intimidate and suppress our support base and to prevent them from coming out to vote. And indeed, we've been exonerated. One year after that disgraceful chapter in our nation's life, there are questions that remain unanswered. Why must any responsible government compromise the security of the nation by infiltrating the security setup with militia members forming the core of a specialized SWAT unit that the IGP, unit that the IGP under whose command they should fall confess that he knew nothing about. If the current constitution of our national security remains the same, in a case where we need protection, do we seek refuge in the police who were unaware of these rogue elements using police vehicles and who stood passively by as those elements reigned terror on innocent citizens? Why? is the president, Nana Adodanko Akufuado, who should be defending the law, make mockery of it, and thereby set a dangerous precedent by accepting that assault is permitted if one believes that one has been provoked. Why did the president pretend he cared about vigilantism and wanted to tackle it? and yet refused to abide by the key recommendations of the Emil Schott Committee, which among others included the prosecution of identified offenders and the disbanding of the illegal parallel SWAT unit. My brothers and sisters, anyone who professes to love Ghana, the only country that we all have, should be concerned about the president's actions which has almost certainly emboldened these criminal elements within his government and party to attempt more attacks against political opponents, especially with the 2020 election just about 10 months away. Let me make this very clear. We have reached a critical point and Ghana's future as a peaceful United States country is at stake. A leading member of the MPP declared publicly that a leading member of the MPP declared publicly that Ayawasu West Wagon was just a dress rehearsal and that the real event will be on 7 January 2020. Since he made this statement, I haven't heard the president, his vice president, the MPP party leadership dissociate themselves from this statement that was made by the leading member. Ladies and gentlemen, the people of Ghana, under the 1992 constitution, have a constitutional mandate to defend the constitution and our national sovereignty. And we will call on the people of Ghana to prevent any subversion of the will of the people 
and resist any attempt to undermine the Constitution of Ghana on 7th December.